And I just got my Creality uh, Ender 3 3D printer. This is a, a budget printer. It's under $200. I got it on Woot. Uh, unfortunately, UPS screwed things up and it showed up two days late, but it's here now. So I just finished unpacking it. it shows up in this box here. Um, this piece is set right here and the power supply is underneath of it right down here. So you'll need to basically go through and remove all of these various pieces here from the box and then you can lift this out carefully <clears throat> and then get the power supply out. So I got all the little bits and pieces separated out. They're all uh, clearly marked in their bags and apparently it also comes with all the tools you need. So here's what the instructions look like. It looks pretty straightforward. Um, from what I've heard, it takes a little bit more than an hour to do the assembly. I'm hoping that will hold true for me here. Right, step one is to attach these two rails using four M5 by 45 hex bolts uh, and a lock washer. Um, I can already tell you that you're gonna have extra pieces left over because I have six of these, but it looks like um, you only need four, so that's nice to know. Um, so you'll have to look at the front of the printer here, tilt it up, and then just you know, hand thread it underneath and then tighten it down with the hex key. Um, just make it tight, don't over tighten. This is aluminum, you don't wanna strip it, and you know it's not gonna come uh, come undone. That's what the, the whole purpose of the lock washer here is to help aid from these just coming undone. Um, the left side has two holes here on the bottom for this rail and the right side has uh, two holes facing the inside but the the hole that is longer here as compared to here is going to be on top. So the shorter spacing will be on the bottom, the longer spacing on the top. Step two is to install the uh, controller with the LCD display and the power supply. So this is going to attach to the side here with two five by eight hex bolts. And then the power supply is going to attach here and here with two of the four by 20 hex bolts. Um, I'm gonna have one extra of these and one extra of these. So I actually have five of these and I'm using two now. So I'm gonna use two of them elsewhere. And then here's what the power supply looks like on the side. So the, the switch is down here. And if I come around to this side, <clears throat> so you'll want to make sure that you set the proper uh, input voltage for your country here. Step three is installing the Z-axis limiter. So here it is. Um, I haven't tightened it down yet. It's held in place by these two bolts. Um, and there's basically some channel nuts on the other side. And I'll show you what they look like. So as you can see, these nuts are, are shaped to fit in the channel here, so make sure that they're actually um, lined up correctly, and then they'll go in. So, let's see. A little bit tricky to do with one hand holding the phone, but there you go. So just get them in. Just go ahead and slide it all the way down. Um, it says it should be 32 millimeters from the bottom of the printer to the bottom of the Z-axis limiter, but when I did a quick measurement, and had it all the way down, that was basically this This right here was about 32 millimeters. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just tighten it down right here. Step four is to attach the Z-axis stepper motor and threaded collar onto the back side of the printer. So I installed the threaded rod first into here and then just tighten down the top bolt. You can ignore the bottom one. That's what's used to hold this collar onto the shaft. Um, once you have that in place, you'll use two M4 by 18 tapered um, hex bolts here to attach it to the rail. Um, you can't really see it because it's the same color. Uh, make sure that this is parallel to the rail when you install it because mine, when I first put it in, um, it, it was leaning to the side, so I had to loosen it and then straighten it out. Step five is to attach the extruder motor piece to uh, the horizontal bar that goes up and down using two M4 by 16 hex bolts and lock washers. So they actually gave me six of these and I only need to use four, so I will have two of these left over. So I've already attached it here. Um, so this is what it looks like. Now there's two of these black bars. You want the longer one. Um, and then if you look, it's got this cut out here. There's two of them. There's actually a cut out on this side as well, but this one has a longer spacing 
the cutout on the other side is about here. So you want the longer spacing on this side. So it'll attach here. And the reason why there's a spacing is that there's a head of the of the bolt here that goes into that little that little uh, cutout channel. And then you can see here, it's a little tricky, but there is one bolt there and there is the other bolt there. So you're gonna uh, install the bolts and then run it through the hole up the top and then uh, tighten it down here and then do the same thing over here. Step six is to attach the uh, piece that has the heated nozzle to the rail we just assembled and then there's a piece that goes on the end here using the remaining two um, M4 by 16 hex bolts and washers. So as you can see here is the heated nozzle piece and it's just roll, you can just slide it over the end here and the wheels are just going to roll back and forth across these little channels. Um, as you can see this is actually attached to the printer here. And then here is the end piece. So if you look there's the bolt head here, it's going to line up right here when you go to install it. So put it there and then just use these two bolts and lock washers here and here. Step seven is to install the toothed belt on the horizontal bar here. So if you look here, um, the teeth are going to be facing inwards and up. So I've basically run it. So if you look, the smooth side's going to be facing out. It's going to go around here. There's going to be slack and it's going to run across the top here underneath of these wheels. And when, you, when you're putting it in here, actually the easiest way to get it past the wheels is to pull the wheels back this way. Um, put the end here, which has a little brass piece on it, and then just roll the wheels over it, and then pull it through. And then you'll want to run it um, through that channel, around um, the motor. There's a, like a little tooth gear here around that. And then back down the other side into the slot here. So you're going to have slack on this side, though. But this is how it'll look like when you're done. Just make sure that there's no twists. The teeth should be on the inside consistently all the way through. Step eight is to install what they call the X-axis passive block, but I'm just gonna call it the X-axis tensioner uh, to the end of the rail here. Um, so here it is. Again, it uses these channel nuts. So you wanna have them lined up this way and they're gonna slide in through here. Uh, you want to get them in place and then get the belt around uh, the end of the bearing here. And then basically you're going to want to uh, slide it out to, to uh, give some tension on the belt. Um, you don't want to have it be too tight, but you want you want to have it be tight so that it's not going to skip any teeth, but you don't want to have it too tight that it's going to put some strain on the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and install this now and then I'll show you what it looks like. I found it easier to remove the channel nuts and then uh, put this one channel nut lined up here, this channel nut lined up a little bit further up, uh, put this in place, making sure the belt went around the bearing, and then screwed this in place, and then I pushed this channel nut underneath the hole and then tightened that one down. Um, the reason I did that is that you don't want to accidentally have this one slide underneath of there while you're trying to tighten this one down, but you can control it if it's outside of here, then you push it. Also, make sure that it doesn't rotate. You want to make sure that it's lengthwise this way so that the ends grip onto the, end, the undersides of the channel. Step nine is to attach the horizontal bar, which I believe is the x-axis based on the name of the tensioner I just had to install on it to the top of the tower rails. So um, here it is. I've made sure that there's no kinks in the cable as much as possible. The nozzle is facing up. So this is the backside of the printer. We're just going to rotate it around this way and then slide it down onto the rails. So that rail is going to go between those rollers that rail is going to go uh, between these rollers and if you can see there's a brass piece right there that's where the threaded rod is going to go so i'm going to go ahead and put it on and then i'll show you what it looks like here it is in place All right, once you get it onto here rotate from down here counterclockwise and that will pull it down just make sure that the uh the other side is lined up so that the wheels um are past this edge here so it'll roll all the way down consistently and then you can just keep rotating it counterclockwise to get it down more. After all that step 10 looks pretty easy. We're going to take the other horizontal bar and place it across the top and then fat, uh, fasten it with four M5 by 25 
uh, hex bolts. They already have the lock washers attached to them. They gave me six of these. I only need four of them. So if you look here, again, there's this little um, cutout here to allow space for the uh, head of the bolt. So just secure them on both sides there. And then once you're done securing it and tightening it down, uh, they do have these little end caps that will just pop onto the end right here. Step 11 is to attach the filament holder. It's just four pieces. It's the, the metal piece here, this circular piece here, and then two uh, plastic nuts on the sides. Uh, and then they're going to attach to this top rail using the remaining two uh, M5 by eight hex bolts. So I'm, I'm being left over with one spare of these. And then you'll also need to use two of the channel um, nuts. Uh, so I got three, I'm gonna have one spare. You're gonna have to put the channel nuts into the top of here so that they're uh, lengthwise this way and then rotate them um, so that they're this way and then they'll stay in place. Uh, and then, so this is the front of the printer. You're gonna wanna place this right around here facing back. Last step. So I've already connected all the cables. I'll show you those in a second. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert the tube here into the extruder outlet. It's gonna move in maybe about, about a little bit more than a quarter of an inch and then just pull this back and that'll be secure. All right, so now uh, let's do all the cables. So connect the power cable here. Um, and then all of the motors have labeled um, cables here. They'll, they'll all have two um, plugs, except for the extruder one. They actually forget to mention the Y one in the instructions, but the Y, um, the smaller one goes into here. And then the wider one goes onto the bottom of the motor. Z, the wide plug goes here onto the motor. And the narrow plug goes here on the, on the front side. Yeah, X, the narrow plug goes inside here and the wider plug goes into the motor down here. And then E for the extruder goes here. Um, also, and I'm gonna flip it down on its side here, there is a ribbon cable um, that is right here and that is going to plug into uh, EXP3 on the underside of this board. Make sure that you keep these wires out of the way before you print. Um, I've actually taken one of these twist ties just to keep it out of the way until I can actually print a proper clip for these. Because what's going to happen is when the bed comes back, uh, if the wires are behind it, it's going to catch them and then it's going to get stuck. Um, also, as you can see here, since I'm going to be printing on PET G filament, I've already put um, blue painter's tape across the top of the aluminum bed. So I'm very happy with how quiet this thing is and how well the first print job was. This is actually the second thing I'm printing. Uh, the first thing that I printed is currently in use here. It's a simple filament guide. So I'm, I'm basically printing out an array of upgrade parts for the Ender 3. And then once I'm done doing all of those, then I'll start printing out some more fun things. But it's, uh, it's working pretty well. I'm basically using these parts to sort of t tune in and tweak and figure out the temperatures and additional settings. So I think I have it uh, figured out here. 235 degrees for the nozzle and 70 degrees for the uh, bed temperature uh, to use PETG filament. This will be a good test to see if my settings are going to be consistent with that first layer. It's nice to be able to start the job, not have to worry about the first layer, go to bed, and then wake up and come down to fully printed parts. Thanks for watching.